What is up you guys? I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes. Welcome back to my channel. And if we're just meeting in this channel, I do a lot of tutorials for video and photo editing. So if you're interested in those topics, stick around, see what it's all about, and maybe you can subscribe at the end. Okay, so today we're starting a brand new series called the Edelag series, but for video. So in this series, what we're gonna do is break down certain looks or color grading styles from different creators, YouTubers, Instagrammers, or even movies, and then try to replicate the, that color grading in post edition to achieving that look and creating a lot as a result. Okay, so the style that we're gonna break down for the starters is gonna be the typical or the famous teal and orange look. Now, the teal and orange look is so famous uh, because we see it in so many movies, in so many YouTube channels in the past decade, but also in particular because it's working with color contrast or complementing colors. So if you pop up a color wheel right here, we can see that in one side we have the teal colors, the blues and the aquas, and directly opposite to them is the oranges, the reds and the yellows. That's why this color grading technique is so famous and it's so pleasing to the eye because you're working with colors that complement directly each other. So these two colors are direct opposites but they also complement each other. We can see that so many logos or in the marketing world or football kits or anything that's pleasing to the eye work with color contrast or with direct opposites in the color wheel. For example, here we can see the logo from Ikea which is blue and yellow which are direct opposites and that's why they complement each other when they are put together in a logo and the examples are so many guys. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is break down four different techniques that I know of to create the teal and orange look. Now it's going to be a quite a long video guys so if you want to skip to a certain technique you can just check out the chapters down here in the timeline so you can skip to a certain one but the purposes of this tutorial is for you guys to understand how color grading works and there are several workflows to achieving the same results. So let's start off by editing the first one. Just a quick message guys, before we jump into Premiere Pro, I want to take 30 seconds to thank all of you guys who are part of this community. My original channel, Tony Fuentes, has just reached the 50,000 K mark. So I'm very thankful if you left a like, a visit, a comment, or bought any of my products. I'm very thankful. Thank you guys that we're creating this big community for learning, color grading, and editing. So remember that everything in my shop, just to celebrate, has a 50% discount all the rest of this month with the code that's appearing on screen right now. So enough about that. Thank you guys. Let's jump into the editing in Premiere Pro. Okay, so once in Premiere Pro, here we have two clips loaded up. Uh, notice that both of them are here in the studio in a controlled environment for the lighting and the exposure. So we have this one, which is at night. And then we have this one, which is in the day. Still, the environment is a lot more controlled. Now, the color green techniques that I'm going to show you are going to be useful for any camera brand. But these ones are shot in S-Log3 in the color mode s Gamma 3 cine and both of them are shot with the automatic ISO, so they're always uh, correctly exposed. I didn't have any peaking in the zebras or anything like that, so the images are neutral, and also the white balance is correct. So first of all, before we edit the teal and orange look in any manner or any of the modes that I'm gonna teach you, first of all, we have to correct this log footage. Now, I already made a tutorial dedicated to correcting log footage step by step, uh, which is very useful guys for any camera brand whether it be Canon, Nikon, Sony uh, If you want to check it out, I'll link it up here in the cards But right now I'm just gonna use one of my correction LUTs or conversion LUTs just to correct this footage with one simple step Okay, the first thing that we have to notice is that in the color workspace over here That's why we have the Lumetri color open and also the Lumetri scopes to monitor our editing Now I'm just gonna go over to the basic corrections and apply our conversion LUT over here in the basic corrections And I'm just gonna browse through them and just gonna match it with the way my clip was shot Which is in S log 3, S gamma 3 dot cine And as we can see now the clip is corrected, gonna do the same with the other one Again basic corrections and just select the corresponding conversion LUT so just a quick note, if you're a Sony shooter and you're interested in this conversion lot, you can check it out up here in the cards. It has a 50% discount with the code that I already gave you. And there you will find more than 14 lots or conversion lots to convert or your log footage into Rec. 09. It doesn't matter if you're shooting on APS-C or on the previous generations of cameras or in the newer generation of cameras that shoot 10-bit. So if you wanna check it out, links up there, that's the way you can support me. Okay, now we have our footage converted into Rec. 709 or standard video. Now we can go ahead and apply our color grading. Now the first method is gonna be a very basic one and it's gonna be oriented to those people who don't wanna get into the nitty gritty on color grading or maybe don't have the time, which is a very basic one, which is using a lot. Now the corrective LUTs are one thing and the creative LUTs where we apply our color grading are another thing. Now, as I mentioned before, up here go the conversion LUTs, but down here under the creative tab we can apply our look or just load up our uh, LUTs that only affect the color green part. So I'm just gonna browse and find one of my LUTs 
So here I have my teal and orange LUT. I'm just gonna apply it and immediately we can see how everything has turned into that teal and orange look. We can deactivate it right here. And there we have our Rex 09 and now we have that teal and orange look with everything in the background having a teal color add my skin really making emphasis on those orangey tones. Now the beauty behind using LUTs is that you can control the intensity of the color grading by moving this slider up or down. If we want something more subtle we can pull it down and still it has that teal and orange look but it's a lot more subtle or we can pull it up if we want something like sand cold for example like here. There we have that extreme teal and orange look. So that's method one, a very basic one, but I just had to mention it for people who don't want to spend a lot of time color grading or just interested in having a nice image. Now this LUT will be the first one that we're gonna add into the edit like LUT pack, which is the white one, not the photo version. It's gonna be linked up here also. And then we're gonna start adding every single LUT that we create throughout this series. So if you're interested, check it out up here in the cards. Okay, so that's method one. The second one that we're gonna look into is using the color wheels and match. And if we click on the color wheels over here, we can see that we have a palette very similar to the color grading part that we have in Lightroom, but we don't have the balance and the fusion sliders. It's a bit more basic. So we have only shadows, midtones, and highlights and adjusting the luminance in all of them. So what we want to do here is a very, very simple edit. What we want to do is first of all, pull down the shadows towards the teal color. Now, which tone will depend on your preference? For example, there are more bluish teal and orange looks or more mint-like. I'm gonna go for something in the middle, for example, something around here. Now we have that teal color in every part of the image. And then the skin tones are normally going to be controlled by the midtone. So what I'm going to do is pull the midtones up towards the oranges. And as we can see, my skin has that warmish tone to it now. And there we have it. Now we have a teal and orange look, but it's not quite enough. So I'm going to go up to basic corrections. And here I'm just going to add a bit more saturation to it. As you can see immediately now, we can see that teal and orange look that has appeared. We can see before and after by clicking on and off the color wheels. There we have it. Now we have that teal and orange look. Now this is the most basic one and the one that I recommend the most for people who are just starting out. Now this one, we can also save it as a LUT. For example, if we go up here into the Lumetri color, we can export our LUT as a look or as a cube file. Now remember, before you export or save a look, you need to make sure that you're selecting only the things that you want to translate to the LUT file. For example, I don't want the basic corrections or the correction LUT over here to be translated into my LUT. So I'm just gonna deselect it as none. Just gonna want the saturation over here to pass and the color wheels. So I'm just gonna export this one as a cube file. Okay, once we've exported it, now this LUT can be loaded up and applied to different scenarios. So for example, here we have the other clip in the day and this one has the basic corrections only. Now here in creative, we can load up our LUT file that we just created. There we have it. And now we've loaded it up. Now we can control the intensity by putting it up or down. And there we have our teal and orange look. And that's how you create LUTs. And just like that, guys, that's the method two, using the color wheels within Premiere Pro to create our teal and orange look. Now, this method is maybe the simplest of the color grading part. So if you're just getting into color grading in video, these two or these three wheels are gonna be your lifesavers to achieving specific looks. So the second method is quite simple. Now we're gonna jump into one that's a bit more tedious, which is using the RGB channels in the tone curve. Now this one is a bit hard to use, but I highly recommend you guys to just test it out to understand how the RGB channels and the tone curves really work in video. So let's jump into Premiere Pro once again. Okay, so once again, I have my clip already corrected. I'm gonna go to the curves over here. Just check mark that it's working. And here, first of all, we have our RGB tone curve and then our RGB channels. Now this setup may seem familiar because we've already seen it in Lightroom and in Photoshop, these are the same RGB channels and the same tone curve that we have in those programs. But just then, as in this, those programs when we made our teal and orange look for photo, I'll link that video up here. And you need to be very careful when moving these values around because you're also messing around with the exposure and the contrast of our image. Now, these three channels, uh, you're gonna see that they work perfectly with color contrast. So by moving one channel, you're... so this setup may seem a bit familiar just because in Lightroom, we also work with the tone curves and the RGB channels to achieve certain looks and control the overexposure and contrast of our image. It's basically the same thing, but applied to video. Now, remember that in the tutorial for achieving a teal and orange look for photo, which I'll link up here in the cards, we messed around with these ones to achieve the teal and orange look. It's gonna be basically the same, but for video. So if you don't know how to do it, let's jump into it and I'll show you how to achieve a teal and orange look with the RGB channels. Now, one thing that we have to keep in mind when we're working with RGB channels is that the RGBs 
are basically the red, green, and blue channels control every single pixel of our image. Every single pixel on our image is composed of these three colors in a greater or lesser mix to create the exposure that we're looking at right now. Now, for example, here we have the red tone curve and logically this one is going to move the red tones, but also it's going to move the direct opposite in the color wheel. Again, we're talking about color contrast just as we did in the start of the video. So in one side we have the reds and directly opposite in the color wheel we have the aquas over here. Now we can see if we pull it down, all the reds disappear and it's converted into aquas. Now the greens, for example, we have greens and then we have purples on the other side and the blues, we have blues in one side and on the other side well, we have the yellows. So in order to create the teal and orange look, what we have to do is combine some of these tone curves or the colors on these tone curves to create the teal and the orange look because we don't have a tone curve for the teal and the orange. We have to work around and create a teal and orange look by combining the tone curves that we have at our disposal. So first of all, let's create that teal look in the shadow. So I'm gonna create a point in the shadows, in the midtones and in the highlights of the red tone curve. And I'm gonna drag the shadows down because this is where we want to add that aqua or teal look just gonna drag it ever so slightly down and as we can see the shadows on our image start to acquire that teal look but it's more towards the aquas what we want is something a bit more blue so I'm gonna go to the blue tone curve I'm gonna combine that teal look that we added in the red with some dark blue to create the color that we're looking for so I'm gonna create a point in the shadows once again midtones and highlights I'm gonna drag the shadows up towards the blues as you can see if we drag it too much everything turns towards the blues don't want to go too far just add ever so slightly just a bit so this blue is combining with the aqua that we added and now we have that teal color that i was looking for next up the oranges in the skin now the skin tones normally are or in the mid tones or in the highlights because we're exposing to them so first of all in the red tone curve i'm going to add a bit of red to the highlights just a bit as you can see it really affects my skin and then in the blue, I'm gonna add a bit of yellow to combine it with that red curve and create orange. So I'm just gonna add a bit, there we have it. And there we have our teal and orange look. What I'm gonna do is just add a bit more saturation. And as we can see, now we have that teal and orange look. But you can see that this image is very contrasty. Why is that? Because by playing around with the RGB channels, you're also playing around with the exposure and contrast. As we can see in our curves, the red tone curve is going down, bringing down the shadows, and then it's going up, bringing up the highlights, creating a natural contrast over here. So we're gonna go into the RGB tone curve over here, which is the one that controls all of them. And what we're gonna do is just compensate this contrast that we created. So I'm gonna create a point in the shadows, point in the highlights and in the midtones, and I'm gonna do the opposite of our strongest tone curve, which is the red one, and just gonna pull ever so slightly up the shadows and pull ever so slightly down the highlights. And there we have it, now our image is not too contrasty, but still it has that teal and orange look. We can also go a bit more to the extreme, yeah. So there you have it guys, this is the third and most complicated and advanced method to create the teal and orange look that I know of, which is using the RGB channels. Now, props to you guys if you made it this far, because this tool, uh, the RGB channels, is a very advanced tool for color grading. I normally don't use it, uh, but I, I think it's important for you guys to understand how the RGB channels in color grading work. Now we're going to move into the fourth one, which is the best one, the most accurate one, and the one that I highly recommend, which is using HSL secondary. So let's jump into it. Okay, so briefly, I'm just gonna deactivate the RGB channels over here and return all the saturation. Okay, so the HSL secondary, as we can see over here, is this tab at the bottom. Now, this tool may seem a bit familiar just because it has a lot of resemblance to the HSL that we have in Lightroom, where we can alter the hue, the saturation, and the luminance of certain colors. Now, in this case, first, before we alter a color, we need to select it and isolate it on our image. Now, I already made a tutorial dedicated to the HSL secondary. I'll link it up here in the cards in case you want to check it out and really nail down this tool. But for this tutorial, first of all, we're going to isolate the skin tones and apply the orange look to our skin. And then we're going to isolate everything else and apply that teal color. Okay, so first of all, let's select with the eyedropper my skin. And as we can see, immediately the sliders start to move around. We can also play around with these sliders or we can just hit the selector plus and keep selecting our skin until we have everything selected. Now to see what we're selecting, we can select the overlay over here, the color gray or the color black, for example, and we can just gonna see what we're selecting. Now we're gonna keep going until we have everything on our skin selected. Once we've done that, now we can disactivate our overlay and now we're going to go down to our editing part. We can see that the part at the top is dedicated to selection or keying our, our color. And then down here we have our 
tools to really correct it and color grade it independently. Now we can also use the three color wheels over here. I'm just gonna use the general one and just gonna add an orange look to our skin. Not too much. Okay, something like that. Now it looks like I have jaundice or a disease or something with that orange tone. But now we want to add a teal look to everything else but our skin. So what we're gonna do is go to effects controls over here. Now, if you don't see this tab over here, you can always go to window and select effect controls and it will appear. And over here, we can see that we have our Lumetri color that we're creating over here. This is the one that we've been using throughout this editing tutorial. And what I want to do is copy it, right click, copy, and then I'm gonna control V or command V and paste it. Now, as we can see, it's copied every single value that we've created. So if we click on this one, we can also see over here, we can see that the conversion lot has been imported as well. So I'm just gonna select none over here. And then every single other value has been copied as well. Here we have the creative look, we have the tone curves over here. So in this case, I'm not gonna select those because I don't want them to come into play. What I'm gonna do is go all the way down to HSL secondary. And as you can see, I'm even more yellow just because this is just another layer of orange on our skin. What I'm gonna do is select this button over here, which is the inversion button. So we're gonna select it. And now everything that we selected is inverted. Now we can see it. And now we can see that everything is completely yellow. That's because we have the oranges in the first Lumetri selecting my skin. And now we're selecting everything but my skin with that orangey tone. So I'm just gonna return this color to the zero and now we can see that it's normal. Just gonna see that what we're selecting, we're selecting everything but my skin. And now what I want to do is just add that teal color to everything else but my skin. So I'm just gonna move the color towards the teal looks, something like that. And there we have it. Just like that, we have now our teal and orange look. Now we can see that this second Lumetri color where it does is just basically add that teal color to everything but our skin. In the first one, we had the oranges on our skin but also the conversion lot. So here we have the original, and then we have this one that only adds a teal color to everything but our skin. So for me, this is the best method to achieving that teal and orange look, but there's a catch. You can't save this as a lot because you're using two different Lumetri colors. So in this case, there's no way to really merge these two together. Um, you just have to do it manually for each clip, and that's the real catch about this method, but I think it's the one where you can achieve the best results other than using the LUT. But as we can see, the results are fantastic. We can also just copy the settings, right-click the clip, copy, and apply them to the other clip. For example, here we have the other one, and paste. Just paste the Lumetri color, just make sure they're marked, hit OK. And there we have it now, the teal orange look has been translated to another clip, but still we can save it as a lot. So there we have it guys, those are my four methods to achieving a teal and orange look. And as you can see, there's several manners in which you can achieve the same type of color grading. It all depends on your workflow and which one accommodates to you. So first of all, we have the LUTs, which is the most simple one. Then we have the color grading part, which is very simple and very quick results. Then we have the RGB channels, which is the most complex one and the most imprecise one in my opinion. And finally, I have uh, the most precise one, which is using two Lumetri colors in HSL secondary to isolate the skin and then isolate it from the background and apply color to different parts of the image. So there we have it, guys. Remember that the LUTs from the Sony conversion LUT and also the Edit Like LUT pack will be up here in the cards in case you want to check it out. The LUT pack, uh, remember that it's the white one. Don't confuse it with the Edit Like preset pack, which is dedicated for photos. This one is dedicated for videos. So that's going to be it for today, guys. If you did like the video, can you please give it a like? It actually makes a difference. Consider subscribing. I'm Tony Fuentes. Remember to put me in the comment sections down below any profile or any style that you want me to break down in the color grading regards. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.